championship points, but hey, guess what? You can win more money and more championship points. Team preview. Tapufini, Mandibuzz, Hariyama, Kartana, Arcanine, and Garchomp for Ragav. Uh, Preston running Golduck, Pelipper, Kartana, uh, not Snorlax. Snorlax. Oh, yeah, there is a Snorlax. All right. Uh, sorry, I thought it was left over from the previous game. Uh, Arcanine and Tapu Lele, so. Yeah, uh, I think the Tailwind from Mandibuzz is going to be very important in this game to uh, keep Golduck from running too crazy. Uh, it does have the Tapu Fini that doesn't mind taking the uh, Hydro Vortex if it has to, but nothing else on this team really wants to take that. Even the Cortana, while it resists it, would easily be KO'd by it. Yep, and here we go. Double Duck for Preston, uh, leading with the Pelipper and the Gold Duck. Tapu Fini and Mandibuzz is going to go ahead and activate the Missy Seed after the Missy Terrain comes up. And actually, interesting thing to note that Pelipper is faster than that Tapu Fini. Cool. I'm not sure if that's normal. But I, think, I think that's fairly normal. That's uh, fairly normal. All right. Well, uh, Preston's Pelipper went on a rampage in the previous game, in yeah. the previous match. Yeah. I'm not, not sure he's going to have the opportunity to do that again. No uh, flying weak Pokemon other than Hariyama, but uh, Hariyama's a little better outfitted to take those uh, Hurricanes than Buzzwool was. All right. But instead, we have the Hydro Vortex come out. Uh, Preston going to go hyper offensive right off the bat here. Going to try to take out this Mandibuzz with this Hydro Vortex in the rain, preventing any sort of Tailwind setup here. Golduck, oh no, going for the top of Fini here. No, we saw a player attempt this yesterday also. Uh, Jarek went for oh, this. Oh my, that did but a lot of damage. It did much less than that one. A critical hit, uh, doing massive damage, and then I guess mirroring the Tailwinds. Yeah, and top of Fini gets to go for a Moon Blast here. Uh, going to hit that Golduck. Uh, top of Fini, uh, not exactly a heavy hitter, but it does drop the special attack stat as Mana Buzz goes for us now. Going to reduce the damage of the Hurricanes, Brines, Hydro Pumps, Surfs, Scalds, whatever this Golduck really wants to throw away, and at the same time breaking that Focus Dash on Pelipper that it is carrying. Yeah, uh, very useful Snarl there with two special attackers. Uh, Golduck manages to get its Hydro Vortex off before getting Snarl, so it gets it off at full power. Does it into Tapu Fini for what would be otherwise been less than 50% because of the critical hit. It's pretty good damage, but kind of expected after seeing that to have Pelipper maybe Hurricane and try to get the KO on Tapu Fini. Uh, instead, it Tailwind's probably trying to match the Mandibuzz Tailwind. Since there isn't a Mandibuzz Tailwind, uh, even though uh, Preston's Pokemon were already the two fastest on the field, now they're really the two fastest Pokemon on the field. <laughs> no Tailwind coming up from the Mandibuzz, even though Mandibuzz uh, could have used Tailwind to kind of help Kind of help Ragav's team, you know, start, just keep keep up, keep up, right? Uh, top of Lele going to switch in, going to change the terrain from the Misty terrain into the Psychic terrain. Uh, all right, okay. Um, Pelipper goes for a wide guard, though. All right, that's a cool move. Um, going to prevent Snarl from hitting and lowering the damage output as Tapu Fini continues to go for a Moonblast here. Going to hit this Pelipper. Uh, Pelipper can hang on, barely hangs on, as Manvas finally uses his turn to match the Tailwind. So in actuality, Ragav actually gets one extra turn of Tailwind out of this. Yeah, Ragav gets one extra turn of Tailwind, but he's not going to get much out of matching the Tailwind. He was slower before, and he's still slower. So it's kind of two turns of wasted Tailwind, and then only one of useful Tailwind. Mm -hmm. If he goes to something in his back that actually is quick, like his Kartana or his Garchomp, it could be good that he matched the Tailwind. But until that's the case, these are just uh, wasted turns. Uh, but if he felt like there wasn't much for Mandibuzz to do that turn, we saw that it couldn't have snarled. I'm not sure if he predicted that, but it wouldn't have worked. And so if there wasn't anything else to really do, going ahead and getting the Tailwind now, even if you're not going to use every turn of it, is pretty useful. Uh, Tapu Lele gets in unscathed and is immediately a big threat to either of these Pokemon. Would KO the Tapu Fini with a Psychic and uh, do significant damage to Mandibuzz with Moonblast. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if Pelipper leaves the field now uh, to get Rain back later in the game since Golduck has already left the field. Uh, you're going to want to use Golduck late in the game, so you're going to need Pelipper to do that, especially since Pelipper has been snarled already. Yep, Top Fini now protecting itself. Not going to want to get KO'd just yet. Uh, that wide guard last turn, kind of a waste. Pelipper could have gone on the offensive and gotten some more KOs. Uh, Moonblast from that Top of Lele connects onto that Mandibuzz, doing a lot of damage as Pelipper tries to pick up the KO on Top of Fini with a Hurricane. But here it is, the turn that Snarl happens. Pelipper gets KO'd, and Tapu Lele gets a special attack stat. Drop by one stage, going to reduce that damage output. That would have been the turn to wide guard. Yeah, that was a very valuable Snarl. Uh, getting Pelipper knocked out so that you may only have to deal with that Golduck without Swift Swim late in the game. And getting the uh, special attack drop onto Tapu Lele. 
uh, probably meaning it can't Psychic for the KO against Tapu Fini anymore. It easily can still Moonblast for the KO, but not the Psychic. Cortana can handle Tapu Fini, though. Oh, yeah. So right here, it looks like options for Preston to be able to easily pick up two KOs and even a Beast Boost on the way. Yeah, uh, but because of that, I would expect Tapu Fini to leave uh, something to come in that's a little better equipped to deal with the uh, Cortana. You don't want to give up this 50% health Tapu Fini and give up a Beast Boost so easily. If our K9 switches into that slot, uh, it's going to look a lot better, uh, especially since Pelipper's already knocked out and we only have a couple turns of rain left. Our Arcanine's more valuable than it otherwise be, but he may not have brought it since it is against rain. And Golduck going to switch in here. Uh, going to get one, one or two more turns of rain. Not much to kind of really enjoy the rain. Uh, Kartana coming in. That will definitely take the Leaf Blade a lot better than that Tapu Fini. As Mandibuzz switching out, going to sacrifice that seed. But of course, you want better positioning as Arcanine comes in. Uh, going to go for an Intimidate here onto the Kartana on Preston's side. And, you know, that Moonblast did a lot of damage to that Mandibuzz. I'm trying to think back. Choice Specs. Choice Specs top Lele is actually making a comeback. Uh, the Smart Strike connects onto Arcanine. Not very effective damage, so great switch right there from Ragav to get uh, his Pokemon out. Yeah, and great double switch. Safe, yeah. Because it seemed like the Kartana likely was to go to going to go for Tapu Fini. Only switching that slot to protect it would have been uh, maybe convenient. Uh, instead switches both, and so Kartana really can't do anything here. But uh, Preston did make the switch to his own Golduck, and so Arcanine is not very uh, safe on the field. Uh, It'd be interesting to go for something like the Leaf Blade and Water move into Arcanine. All right, but instead, uh, Golda protects here. Not going to want to go on the offensive just yet, uh, as the Kartana on Preston's side also protects as well. So, uh, yeah, ju just probably trying to stall out this Tailwind here as a Bloom Doom comes out. Hitting that Golduck, that Golduck's already been hit with an attack, so uh, this could still be the KO. Yeah, I would expect it is the KO, and that's kind of the risk with double protecting now in the uh, age of Z moves and their ability to do damage right through protect. Uh, it's a very cool mechanic. It adds a, another layer of strategy, in my opinion, where you can get chip damage if you need it. Right, and keeps Z moves from being wasted uh, too often. Yeah, so Golduck does get KO'd by that Bloom Doom. Kartana gets a beast boost here. Going to go ahead and get the attack boost. And now this Kartana on Regal's side is ready to go as the Arcanine goes for a Flare Blitz into that Protect as the rain stops and the Tailwind peters out. Yeah, it's kind of interesting that Golduck protected there. It was matching the Tailwind already because of uh, uh, there was Swift no Swim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it was still slower than Kartana, but even once Tailwind expired, Swift Swim was going to expire and it was still going to be slower than Kartana. And I don't know if he knew that Ragov has Bloom Doom, but it allowed the KO without even a chance to attack. Arcanine switching out, probably going to try to take this Psychic here uh, because Mandibuzz comes in. Kartana on Ragov's side, now not wanting to get KO'd, uh, not wanting to sacrifice that Beast Boost just yet. Uh, Preston's Kartana goes for the Sacred Sword, and yep, all right, so Tapu Lele looks like it's going to lock itself as the terrain disappears too. Yeah, lock itself into a Psychic that does no damage to Mandibuzz and... Uh, still significant damage though resisted to Kartana, but is very vulnerable to a Smart Strike now. If it is Choice Specs, then it can't be Choice Scarf, and so it's slower than this Kartana, uh, and should just go down to the Smart Strike this turn since there's no switch opportunity for pa Preston. Yep, and it's going to continue to rotate those Intimidates in, continue to weaken the Kartana on Preston's side here, uh, just to play it safe, you know, don't want to get too ahead of itself as the Leaf Blade connects on top of Lele. That is a massive amount of damage thanks to that Beast Boost and it picks up the one-hit KO. Kartana gets another Beast Boost here, so the Sacred Sword from Regal's side should start be able to uh, pretty much pick up KOs on that Kartana on the other side. Yeah, and there is, is no Smart Strike on Regal's side. We've seen the full moveset uh, oh, Sacred Sword, I with mean. Detect, Sacred Sword, Leaf Blade, and Substitute. Um, and so he, that's why he's had to Leaf Blade the top of Lele there, but because of the Beast Boost, it's a KO just as well as Smart Strike would have been. Yeah, and Tapu Lele has a much weaker physical defense, so uh, Tapu Lele not having a chance to survive that at all. Kartana now goes for the Sacred Sword. That should be enough to pick up the KO, and Ragav Malavia actually takes this game in dominating fashion. 4-0 versus Preston Clark. That is only game one. Preston Clark has some time to make some adjustments here. Yeah, and I think one quick adjustment is just where you put that uh, 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 Hydro Vortex. I Doing 40% to Tapu Fini, I think, is just not worth the Z-move and the kind of rare opportunity to attack with Golduck. You can see how Golduck never managed to have another free opportunity to attack. Get snarled that turn, and then 
was reduced in offense, and then Tailwind started being a problem, and faster Pokemon, and things that couldn't really damage. And so if that first Hydro Vortex had been on Mandibuzz instead, I think it could have been a much easier game for Preston. Yeah, you remove that threat of Tailwind remove to match your Tailwind. And the Snarl ended up being a big problem. It got the yeah. KO on Pelipper and was reducing special attack across the board for uh, uh, Preston, who brought uh, three special attackers in Cartana. Yeah, it's a... Uh, oh, boy. Here we go. Ragav trying to make it to the finals here. Uh, Preston trying to also make it to the finals. No accomplishments in the past, but here he is in the top four. Uh, yeah, Double Ducks proving to be... So a solid archetype here. Uh, going to be exerting a lot of pressure. And it all comes down to picking off that Mandibuzz like a vulture. Yeah, uh, picking off the Mandibuzz. Uh, I don't know if Preston has Brine, but I would expect Hydro Vortex plus Brine, even with a special defense boost, would be a KO. Yeah. Uh, if, if he doesn't have it, Scald's uh, maybe less likely to get that KO, but could still go for it. All right, everybody, here we are, game two. If Ragav Malavia wins this game, he will move on to the finals. Uh, Preston needs to win two more. Uh, double duck again for Preston, and Kartana and Tapu Fini for uh, Ragav here. Kind of an adjustment. Yeah, kind of an adjustment. No man to buzz, even though it was effective in the first game. Uh, Kartana's, even though it's resisted, is much more vulnerable to uh, Hydro Vortex than either man to buzz or Tapu Fini, and should be able to uh, Golduck should be able to outspeed and just KO it. Uh, has to watch out for what Tapu Fini's doing. Uh, a Kartana protect or switch would not be good for the Hydro Vortex. But yep, Kartana forced to detect here. Does not want to just instantly get KO'd by a Hydro Vortex. And here we go. Golduck now going to go for another Hydro Vortex. Is it going to target down the Kartana or the Tapu Fini? Both. I mean, I still don't agree with that first uh, Hydro Vortex in that Tapu Fini slot. That's kind of a waste of a Z move in my opinion. Use that to do massive massive damage to something else. And it does target down the Kartana. Uh, Kartana has paper thin defenses, and we know that it's carrying the Grazium Z, but it still takes that like nothing, uh, thanks to the Protect and thanks to resisting that attack. As Pelper uses his turn to set up a Tailwind, I don't really think he needed that. Well, I guess now Pelper can outspeed the Kartana and go for a Hurricane. possible Hurricane in that slot. Uh, top of Fiend now, gonna go for a Moon Blast. Exact same thing, you know, just weaken this Golduck. And gets another special attack drop, which is going to be pretty important. Yeah, so either Pelipper can outspeed in Hurricane Cartana or Golduck can. Uh, gives you a couple, an extra option, which maybe it makes you less predictable. Um, the Hurricane damage on Tapu Fini would be nice, but uh, isn't so significant that that Tailwind is a, is a big opportunity cost. Uh, I would expect to see Golduck leave the field, uh, maybe come back in and try to help with an Arcanine later in the game. Uh, something it's better equipped to deal with than Cartana and Tapu Fini. Yep, and Cartana has to switch out, does not want to risk uh, staying in and possibly getting encored by Golduck as well. Uh, Mandibuzz hits the field, going to go ahead and activate the Misty Seed, uh, going to boost his special defense by one stage, and Golduck actually stays in and goes for a Hydro Pump in the rain on that Mandibuzz with one stage of decreased special attack, not doing much damage at all. Pelper goes for a Hurricane, going to connect onto that Mandibuzz as well, doubling up in that slot, doing a lot of damage thanks to that critical hit. As Tapu Fini gets to go for Moonblast, and that should do it for... No! Targets down the Pelper and breaks that Focus Sash instead. Yeah, so breaks that Focus Sash, double target into what was the Cartana slot, uh, probably expecting a switch. Ho I mean, hoping that you end up just Hydro Pumping the Cortana and getting the KO, but expecting a switch and wanting to do as much damage as to it as possible, knowing that neither of these Pokemon can really significantly damage Tapu Fini, and you're going to need to save that for to be Cortana's problem later in the game. And so instead, just trying to get damage wherever you can do it, and not switch out while you do have Swift Swim and Rain and Tailwind all to your advantage all on timers. Yeah, um, Mandibuzz does come in, but it's now threatened to get KO'd thanks to that critical hit. Um, Man was probably coming in trying to match that tailwind, uh, but Golduck goes for an ice beam instead. This should be the KO on. Uh, I don't know. Man was hangs on. Yeah, special defense boost. Uh, Pelipper goes for a hurricane. Thanks to the accuracy. Yep, doubling up in that Mandibuzz, making sure that the KO happens. Uh, yep, there you go. Mandibuzz, no chance to match the tailwind, but tailwind's gonna expire soon anyways. Yeah, that's a valuable KO to get, but uh, it came at a pretty heavy cost. You've lost Golduck. You've taken a lot of damage with Pelipper and burnt most of your turns of tailwind that you set up at the beginning of the game. Yep, and now uh, Kartana can come back in. I think there's only one more turn of Tailwind. Uh, yes, so yeah. it should be able to come in, protect through the last turn of Tailwind, and then be a giant threat to either of these Pokemon, threatening uh, the one at KO on Pelipper, maybe not the one at KO on Tapu Lele, since we know it doesn't have Smart Strike. Yep, uh, Tapu Lele comes in here, uh, going to activate the Psychic Train, and one more turn of Tailwind. 
Uh, Pelper, heavily threatened to get KO'd, will not be able to set up another Trick Room, most likely. Another Tailwind, yeah. Oh, yeah, not another Trick Room. Um, if, uh, if I was uh, Regav, I'd be wanting damage on that Tapu Lele to try to keep it from attacking, and so I'd expect Tapu Fini to try to get that damage this turn. Instead, uh, immediately going to switch out the uh, Pokemon there and going to go into Kartana. As the Kartana on Rogal's side, stalling out this Tailwind here, going to protect itself as Tapu Fini also going to stall out this Tailwind as well. Uh, no need to risk possibly taking a Hurricane and getting confused, because that would be unfortunate. Uh, Pelipper goes for the Hurricane in that Kartana Detect as the Tailwind peters out. Yeah, and so now Kartana is back in for, or in for the first time, rather, for Preston, and is a threat to this uh, Tapu Fini, the, the first time Tapu Fini's been threatened. Uh, Pelipper would be able to 1-8 KO Kartana, but will likely get outsped and KO'd by the Kartana instead. And Kartana on Rogoff side actually switching out, going to try to go for Intimidate here uh, with the Arcanine onto that Kartana, but of course, Leaf Blade actually has a high critical hit chance, so... Uh, maybe we'll bypass that and KO. Oh, no, instead goes for a Sacred Sword onto that Kartana slot. Uh, hitting that Arcanine instead. Uh, life Orb recoil, but that's still a pretty good amount of damage as Tulper actually gets to set up another Tailwind. Yeah, so I think what happened there, uh, Tapu Fini couldn't protect because it protected on the previous turn. And so I think uh, Preston was expecting it to switch. Uh, nobody wants to take a Leaf Blade with their Tapu Fini, especially when it's so effective in this matchup. And if it was the thing switching into Arcanine, the Sacred Sword into Cartana was probably the right move, especially if it could get the KO on Cartana and buy you the Tailwind. You still got the Tailwind, but because the uh, Cartana switch to the Arcanine uh, only got uh, uh, fairly uh, irrelevant damage with Sacred Sword to Arcanine, not too bad, and uh, uh, lost your uh, Pelipper to the Tapu Fini attack. Yep, Tapu Fini switches out, going to go into Kartana here. Going to try to take that Leaf Blade a lot better than that Tapu Fini would. Uh, Arcanine protecting itself, not wanting to get KO'd by a Tapu Lele Psychic right here. Uh, Kartana goes for the Leaf Blade, though. Going to hit into that Kartana, doing a little bit of damage here. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Rakov has got himself good field position here. No, definitely not. Uh, Sacred Sword will be a KO on Kartana. Psychic is a KO on Arcanine. Tapu Fini can come in and weaken that Psychic and take the Sacred Sword, so I would expect that to happen. Uh, but I'm still not sure that's enough for Arcanine to survive the Psychic. And if uh, Preston makes that prediction and double targets Arcanine, there's definitely no way it uh, survives. And if he makes the prediction in Leaf Blades, uh, Tapu Fini could be even more trouble for Ragov. So he's limited his options because he uh, is threatened by two KOs here and uh, is vulnerable to losing Tapu Fini, which is the most important Pokemon. At the same time, the Kartana on uh, Preston's side is intimidated. Uh, maybe Ragov knows that his Kartana will be able to survive just one more Sacred Sword, possibly? Yeah, it could definitely survive another Sacred Sword if it's uh, trained to do so. Uh, and if it's able to survive a Sacred Sword, it couldn't get an attack off, but we've seen it doesn't have Smart Strike, and so it probably can't get a KO of its own because it Smart Strike won't KO the other Kartana. Yep, Kartana has to switch out. Going to go back into Fiend here and probably going to try to take this uh, Sacred Sword a little bit better, trying to stall out this Tailwind as well as Rogoff can. Uh, also, changing the terrain, going to decrease the amount of damage that the Psychic Terrain is going to do. But hey, you know what? Kartana is just going to go ahead and pick up the KO uh, with a critical hit on that Tapu Fini. Thanks, Leaf Blade, for having incre increased critical hit ratio. Going to bring Kartana's attack stat back to neutral after that Intimidate drop and after that Beast Boost. Now Tapu Lele goes for a Psychic here, connecting onto that Arcanine here. Uh, without that Psychic Terrain, oh, it's still enough to pick up the KO. Yeah, and that Leaf Blade was the prediction that was fairly easy to make because the Tapu Fini was being forced in, but was so dangerous for Goff because yeah. since the Leaf Blade crit, he lost the Tapu Fini that was all important. The Psychic still managed to get the KO despite changing the terrain. And so now he's down to just his Kartana uh, with really no chance to win this game. Yeah. Uh, good adjustments from Preston. Yeah. And uh, that was a, the key turn right there was definitely when that Pelipper was able to set up yet another Tailwind. Yeah, that's where I think it really kind of went, went wrong downhill. for uh, for Bergoff. He seemed to be in control of the game early. Uh, the Initial trading, despite losing Mandibuzz, uh, he was doing pretty good damage with his Tapu Fini. Uh, but allowing the second Tailwind that allowed all the extra pressure and then um, losing his Tapu Fini on that switch in uh, is what lost him the game. Yeah. All right. Game three. Len, are you ready for another game three? Yeah. Exciting. Yeah. All right. Rogov Melavia versus Preston Clark. Where do you think the uh, Hydro Vortex will land this time? It's been on a... Cortana, <laughs> it's been on a uh, Tapu Fini. Uh, you know what? I'll throw it on 
Rogov deciding to bring Hariyama this time for some reason and then having that Hydro Vortex thrown onto it. How about that? All right, fake out the Pelipper, take a Hydro Vortex. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's the, the call from Dwee. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, you know, <coughs> Rogov... So I think what a lot of players are doing, they're just ignoring that Pelipper and they're just allowing that Pelipper to be able to set up multiple Tailwinds. Yeah, it was surprising that they got multiple Tailwinds. Uh, to be fair, though, that, that, hurricane, that hurricane critical hit mattered a lot. That, yes. that definitely put Mandibuzz off the... off the. Yeah, because it also the ignored path. the boost from its seed that activated coming into Misty Terrain. All right. Game three. Here we go. I'm expecting Double Duck again. I am also. Top of Fini Mandibuzz here. Going to start off with some synergy with the... Yep, there it is. Double Duck. All right. I'm wrong. The Hydro Vortex is not going to land in some random Hariyama. Uh, probably just going to hit this Mandibuzz right now. Yeah, I would expect to hit the Mandibuzz. Uh, the Mandibuzz is a good target for the Hydro Vortex because you're getting a neutral hit for the first time. And Mandibuzz almost never carries Protect, so you should get the full power, unlike uh, the last game where you ended up going only going through Protect and getting that 40%. That first turn Hydro Vortex is such an important part of the Double Duck, and it's been kind of squandered in games one and two. Uh, Preston won despite that in game two, but if he can get a much more potent uh, Hydro Vortex, I think it could really help him in this game. Especially if he can deny Tailwind like he did in the previous game by getting the quick KO on Mandibuzz this turn. Yep, we're definitely going to... I think the Hydro Vortex this time is going to land on the Mandibuzz. I think, I think Preston realizes, hey, my Tapu Fini, this Tapu Fini isn't really big of a threat. Uh, I have Carton in the back. Pelper goes for a wide guard here. All right, stopping All right, Snarl. Preventing a Snarl just in case it survives. So uh, here it is, the Hydro Vortex. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to land in the Mandibuzz this time. Yeah, I think it'll land in the Mandibuzz, but Mandibuzz will survive. We'll see if it Snarls into that wide guard or if it sets, sets up, up its tailwind. own Tailwind. But even if it sets up a Tailwind, like we've talked about before, uh, not going to be the most important Tailwind as... Golduck will still be faster than both of these Pokemon. Pelipper will fall below them, but it could easily counter that with its own Tailwind. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, critical critical hit. hit. So critical hit, ignoring the seed boost. The second critical hit to do in Mandibuzz and prevent Tailwind in two consecutive games. Uh, Top of Fini gets to go for a man for a Moonblast here onto that Golduck. No special attack drop, so not everything is going Rogov's way here in this game. Uh, Again, a wasted turn by that Pelipper to just go for a white card. <laughs> yeah, wasted But it's safe. It's safe. Wasted turn that probably wouldn't have been wasted without the critical hit. Without the critical hit, I would expect Snarl to be coming out because it is so useful to limit what these two Pokemon can do. And uh, blocking the Snarl would have been really useful because uh, it also would have protected the Pelipper Focus Sash. Uh, instead, he gets the critical hit. Even better. He's happy to waste a wide guard if it means the Amanda Buzz is KO. Yeah. So usually a lot of players leave the Amanda Buzz alone, but this time Preston's deciding to target down and it pays off. Uh, Cartana going to detect here, not wanting to get KO'd from that Golduck as Golduck goes for an Ice Beam into that Cartana detect. Top of Fini probably going to try to pick up the KO here, but Pelipper actually uses his turn to set up Tailwind here. Tailwind was going to come up regardless because of the way that Pelipper is trained and how fast it is. The yeah, it was going to come up regardless. No, because no. goes for a Moonblast into that Pelipper. Golduck still is a threat now. I almost think that is better for Rogov. Uh, Break that Sash? Break the Sash, make sure there's not two Tailwinds. But also, keep Golduck on the field. Uh, it's not as big of a threat as some of the things uh, or Preston could bring out of the back now that he does have Tailwind. It's only more potent because of the Swift Swim, but if he has the Tailwind boost either way, things like the Specs Tapu Lele are much more threatening, especially with the Psychic Immunity gone. Arcanine actually going to switch in here, going to try to take the Ice Beam a lot better than the uh, Cartana would. Uh, but of course, there's always the threat of eating a Hydro Pump as well. Oh, Golduck goes for a Hydro Pump here. Oh, boy. Yep, straight into that slot. Going to pick up the one-hit KO on that Arcanine. Uh, Rogov there trying to play a bit more defensively, but Preston just, you know, hey, why not? It's still going to chunk you, and my Hurricane maybe doubles up into that Cartana picks up the KO. Uh, Top of Fini gets to go for Moonblast here. Uh, going to hit on that Golduck and pick up the KO, so. Yeah, and that Hydro Pump doesn't even have to be a prediction. It is the strongest move against Cartana. Yep. Um, more likely to get the KO on Cartana than Ice Beam is. And so it could easily just been going for the KO on Cartana, willing to risk the 80% accuracy, and instead gets the much better KO on Arcanine. <coughs> uh, uh, very unfortunate there for Gav. Uh, now down to only two Pokemon, and with still a turn of couple turns of Tailwind left here, uh, going to have to deal with this Cartana that's such a big threat to the damaged Tapu Fini. No Intimidate left from Arcanine, no Flare Blitz threat from Arcanine towards this Cartana. Going to need to Sacred Sword it down before it can get a Leaf Blade off. It's a big ask, especially with Pelipper faster than Cartana and threatening Hurricane. 
this might be it right here. Uh, Cartana goes for a Leaf Blade into that top of Union Protect. Hurricane from this Pelipper going to connect onto the Cartana here. Uh, massive damage. You know, one hit KO. This Pelipper is on a Rampage. This is a crazy Pelican right now. Uh, yeah, and I don't, yeah. It's, yeah, it's over. That cell one was just such perfect timing, making use of the swift swim for the first couple of turns so that you don't spin uh, them a kind of double speed control, timing the tailwind so that it was guaranteed to go up and came up right as you uh, end up bringing in your Kartana, making sure that you have the faster Kartana and that your Pelipper, and more importantly, is faster than Kartana so you get that one hit KO with uh, Hurricane before it can Leaf Blade. And there you go. Leaf Blade connects on that top of Fini, and that does it here in... Salt, oh, not in Salt Lake City, but in this match between Ragav Malavia and Preston Clark. Preston Clark moves on to the finals, where he now, regardless of what happens, will take home two, or uh, sorry, five hundred dollars. Yeah. Oh boy. I think it was well played by uh, by Preston. Uh, Ragav is definitely going to be thinking about those pair of critical hits that took Mandibuzz out of the game in games two and three. Yeah. But uh, Preston has to take what he gets and. Uh, kept up the offensive pressure in both games after realizing that without Mandibuzz, his Rigal's team was much more vulnerable and was able to win because of it. Well played from Preston. Good adjustments. Uh, happy to see that the Hydro Vortex landed somewhere that wasn't resisted. Yeah, it wasn't resisted. <laughs> wasn't resisted. third protect and uh, instead a critical hit and a KO. Yeah, a turnaround, a turnaround right there from Preston. Uh, you know, from going game one, getting 4 owed, and then winning games two and three. Granted, there were some moments that were... Uh, unfortunate for Rugov in terms of like critical hits. There was that critical hit on the Mandibuzz with the Hurricane, and then obviously in the third game, that critical hit from the Hydro Vortex into the uh, Mandibuzz after it got those special defense boosts. Yeah, uh, both times preventing possible future snarls. The wide guard was there the second time, but uh, still, Mandibuzz is such an asset. Yeah. Well, Preston Clark. Moves on to the finals, and he awaits the winner between Patrick Smith and Kyle Hudson. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break. When we return, more action here in Salt Lake City. Again, there's a midseason showdown going over, going on here, and it's being streamed over on twitch.tv slash Utah Pokemon VGC. Go ahead and check them out. Uh, while you wait for this match, multi-twitch it. There's also all, all sorts of other streams, you know. Uh, I think Liberty Garden's streaming right now. They're streaming on PC, so lots of Pokemon action today. Stay tuned. <laughs> 